Ramsey sentences are formal logical reconstructions of theoretical propositions attempting to draw a line between science and metaphysics. A Ramsey sentence aims at rendering propositions containing non-observable theoretical terms terms employed by a theoretical language clear by substituting them with observational terms terms employed by an observation language, also called empirical language. Ramsey sentences were introduced by the logical empiricist philosopher Rudolf Carnap. They are also known as Carnap sentences. Topic. Distinction between scientific real questions and metaphysical pseudo questions For Carnap, questions such as, are electrons real, and, can you prove electrons are real, were not legitimate questions implying great philosophical, metaphysical import. They were meaningless. Pseudo questions without cognitive content, asked from outside a language framework of science. Inside this framework, entities such as electrons or sound waves, and relations such as mass and force not only exist and have meaning, but are useful to the scientists who work with them. To accommodate such internal questions in a way that would justify their theoretical content empirically, and to do so while maintaining a distinction between analytic and synthetic propositions, Carnap set out to develop a systematized way to consolidate theory and empirical observation in a meaningful language formula. Topic. Distinction between observable and non-observable Carnap began by differentiating observable things from non-observable things. Immediately, a problem arises, neither the German nor the English language naturally distinguish predicate terms on the basis of an observational categorization. As Carnap admitted, the line separating observable from non-observable is highly arbitrary. For example, the predicate, hot can be perceived by touching a hand to a lighted coal. But, hot, might take place at such a microlevel e.g., the theoretical, heat, generated by the production of proteins in a eukaryotic cell that it is virtually non-observable at present. Physicist philosopher Moritz Schlick characterized the difference linguistically, as the difference between the German verbs, kennen, knowing as being acquainted with a thing, perception, and erkennen. Knowing is understanding a thing, even if non-observable. This linguistic distinction may explain Carnap's decision to divide the vocabulary into two artificial categories, a vocabulary of non-observable, theoretical, terms, hereafter, vt, i.e., terms we know of but are not acquainted with, or kennen, and a vocabulary of observable terms, vo, those terms we are acquainted with, kennen, and will accept arbitrarily. Accordingly, the terms thus distinguished were incorporated into comparable sentence structures, T terms into theoretical sentences, T sentences, O terms into observational sentences, O sentences. The next step for Carnap was to connect these separate concepts by what he calls correspondence rules. See rules, which are mixed sentences containing both T and O terms. Such a theory can be formulated as, T plus C equals DF, the conjunction of T postulates plus the conjunction of C rules, i.e. T 1 T 2 T N plus C 1 C 2 C M Display style T underscore one land T underscore two land C D O T S land T underscore N plus C underscore one land C underscore two land C D O T S land C underscore M. This can be further expanded to include class terms such as for the class of all molecules, relations such as between us and predicates, e.g., T C T one T two T N O one O two ohm. Though this enabled Carnap to establish what it means for a theory to be empirical, this sentence neither defines the T terms explicitly nor draws any distinction between its analytic and its synthetic content, therefore it was not yet sufficient for Carnap's purposes. In the theories of Frank P. Ramsey, Carnap found the method he needed to take the next step, which was to substitute variables for each T term, then to quantify existentially all T terms in both T sentences and C rules. The resulting Ramsey sentence effectively eliminated the T terms as such, while still providing an account of the theory's empirical content. The evolution of the formula proceeds thus. 
Step 1 empirical theory, assumed true, TC T1, TN, O1, ohm. Step 2 substitution of variables for T terms, TC X1, XN, O1, ohm. Step 3 display style exists quantification of the variables x 1 x n t c x 1 x n o 1 o m Display style exists x underscore one L dots exists x underscore N T C x underscore one L dots x underscore N O underscore one L dots O underscore M Step three is the complete Ramsey sentence, expressed R T C and to be read, there are some unspecified relations such that T C x one x N O one ohm is satisfied when the variables are assigned these relations. This is equivalent to an interpretation as an appropriate model. There are relations R1, Rn such that Tc x1, xn, O1, ohm is satisfied when she is assigned the value re, and 1 I M displaystyle 1 leq I leq M. In this form, the Ramsey sentence captures the factual content of the theory. Though Ramsey believed this formulation was adequate to the needs of science, Carnap disagreed, with regard to a comprehensive reconstruction. In order to delineate a distinction between analytic and synthetic content, Carnap thought the reconstructed sentence would have to satisfy three desired requirements. The factual FT component must be observationally equivalent to the original theory TC. The analytic at component must be observationally and informative. The combination of F T and it must be logically equivalent to the original theory, that is F T plus A T T C display style F underscore T plus A underscore T left right arrow T C Requirement 1 is satisfied by RTC in that the existential quantification of the T terms does not change the logical truth, L truth of either statement, and the reconstruction FT has the same O sentences as the theory itself, hence RTC is observationally equivalent to TC, i.e., for every O sentence, O T C O R T C O Display style T C models O left right arrow caret R T C models O. As stated, however, requirements two and three remain unsatisfied. That is, taken individually, at does contain observational information such and such a theoretical entity is observed to do such and such, or hold such and such a relation, and at does not necessarily follow from F T. Carnap's solution is to make the two statements conditional. If there are some relations such that TC X1, XN, O1, ohm is satisfied when the variables are assigned some relations, then the relations assigned to those variables by the original theory will satisfy TC T1, TN, O1, ohm or RTC TC. This important move satisfies both remaining requirements and effectively creates a distinction between the total formula's analytic and synthetic components. Specifically, for requirement 2, the conditional sentence does not make any information claim about the O sentences in TC, it states only that, if, the variables in are satisfied by the relations, then, the O sentences will be true. This means that every O sentence in TC that is logically implied by the sentence RTC TC is L true i.e., every O sentence in AT is true or not true, the metal expands or it does not, the chemical turns blue or it does not, etc. Thus TC can be taken as the non-informative i.e., non-factual component of the statement, or at requirement 3 is satisfied by inference, given at, infer FT at. This makes at plus FT nothing more than a reformulation of the original theory, hence at UFT OTC. Carnap took as a fundamental requirement a respect for the analytic-synthetic distinction. This is met by using two distinct processes in the formulation, drawing an empirical connection between the statement's factual content and the original theory observational equivalence, and by requiring the analytic content to be observationally non-informative. Application 
Carnap's reconstruction as it is given here is not intended to be a literal method for formulating scientific propositions. To capture what Pierre Duhem would call the entire holistic universe relating to any specified theory would require long and complicated renderings of RTCTC. Instead, it is to be taken as demonstrating logically that there is a way that science could formulate empirical, observational explications of theoretical concepts, and in that context the Ramsey and Carnap construct can be said to provide a formal justificatory distinction between scientific observation and metaphysical inquiry. Topic. Criticism Among critics of the Ramsey formalism are John Winnie, who extended the requirements to include an observationally non-creative restriction on Carnapset, and both W. V. O. Quine and Carl Hempel attacked Carnap's initial assumptions by emphasizing the ambiguity that persists between observable and non-observable terms. See also Ramsey-style epistemic structural realism Topic Notes Topic Works cited Carnap, R. 1950. Empiricism, Semantics, and Ontology. In Paul Moser and Arnold Natt, Human Knowledge Oxford University Press, 2003. Carnap, R. 1966. An Introduction to the Philosophy of Science, especially. Parts 3, and V. ed. Martin Gardner. Dover Publications, New York. 1995. Carnap, R. 2000 originally, 29 December 1959. Theoretical Concepts in Science. With introduction by Stathis Sillos. Studies in History and Philosophy of Science 31 1. Demopoulos, W. Carnap on the Reconstruction of Scientific Theories. The Cambridge Companion to Carnap, eds. R. Kreeth and M. Friedman. Moser, P. K. and van der Natt, A. 2003, Human Knowledge Oxford Univ. Press. Schlick, Moritz 1918, General Theory of Knowledge Allegomina Erkant Nihiler. Trans. Albert Blumberg. Open Court Publishing, Chicago, LaSalle, Ill. 2002. Halvard Lillehammer, D. H. Meller 2005, Ramsey's Legacy, Oxford University Press, p. 109. Stathis Sillos. Carnap, The Ramsey Sentence and Realistic Empiricism. 2000. Topic. External links Epistemic Structural Realism and Ramsey Sentences Theoretical terms in science